I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're gonna to be talking about signs that your ex is pretending to be over you. You know, this happens a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, there can be quite a few reasons why your ex pretends that they're over you. You know, one of the big ones I think about is that you know, if your ex ended their relationship with you and they were like, it's not working, and you have repeatedly reached out to them, tried to manipulate, convince them, mm -hmm. change their mind, they're gonna get really cold. Mm -hmm. And so they're gonna act like they don't care about you. Uh, they don't care basically if you're alive or dead. I've described it as the faucet of love coming and all of a sudden they just turn it off. <laughs> Ooh. Not another drop. Good analogy. Right? And yeah. that's what it felt like for me. And I told you about that with the Applebee's girl. That it, That's exactly what it felt like. Mm -hmm. And it was just this horrific feeling of, why are they doing this? Why are they pretending like they don't even care about me? Now I'm questioning if you've ever even cared about yeah. me. Everybody does. And yeah. I said, does this mean they never cared about me? Sure. Yeah, it feels like that. So one of the reasons that people do that is because... They want to kind of stop you from trying to manipulate or change your mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. So okay. maybe you can I've, talk I've, about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, okay, so you're the person who did the breakup. Um, you wanted the breakup. You felt like it was good, although you weren't wildly happy either. Um, and then this person keeps reaching out to you. Well, it pushes you away, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to act like you're absolutely over the relationship and be cold, which of course probably makes the anxious person on the other end pursue you all the more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. But yeah. I think that's a good point. And the point you made earlier I thought was very good too, that sometimes you can't figure out how to get somebody to change, so you do something dramatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't talk about this very often. It's come up here and there about the fake breakups or the pretend breakups. Yeah. Right. And my thoughts behind that, at least one of the ones that I see the most often, is that the person was so frustrated with you that they've told you so many times they needed something from you or that you needed to change something or do something different and you didn't do it that they ended the relationship, not because they really wanted to, but because they were so desperate that they thought it was their only option to get you to change. Right, and that's another reason why somebody would pretend to be over you, is if they broke up with you for external reasons and they didn't really want to break up with you. This could be family that pressured them, friends that pressured them, where they didn't really feel 100% committed even to breaking up. Um, so you might see them trying to pretend to be over you mm -hmm. when they're really not. Yeah. So what are some of the signs? We got a couple signs mm -hmm. that we want you to think about or things that we see. So the first sign is if they still have pictures of you and if they still have objects that you might have given them as a gift. Um, another thing that you can see is if they post pictures with them wearing the objects that you bought them. Um, this is also known as a transitional object, and it's normally a sentimental um, symbol of your relationship or symbol that they're, they were connected to you at some point. Margaret, maybe you could talk if about If you'd that. like to hear some more irrelevant stuff, I'll be happy to tell you. <laughs> there was a brilliant psychologist named Winnicott. I don't remember what Winnicott's first name was, mm -hmm. but Winnicott was very much, he was a psychiatrist. Maybe it was Wynn. Win Winnicott, yeah, like cousin Eric, of Eric Erickson, yes. <laughs> but anyway, Win Winnicott, son was, of Eric Erickson, was a brilliant guy, and he was a psychiatrist who worked with children, and he came up with a couple of absolutely wonderful um, 
terms for us to use. One being that what we need is the good enough mother and the good enough family because nobody's perfect. Mm. And that took a lot of pressure off moms and, and dads even then. And the other concept he gave us was that of the transitional object because he, see, he saw children who were separated from their families and he tried to make sure that the kids had something that reminded them of their parents pictures, objects that the parent liked, and a blanket, most, a blanket mm. and most powerful of all, something that smelled like the parent. Mm. Okay, so sweatshirts are among the favorite transitional objects that people have, even now, because mm. if you've got a sweatshirt somebody wore, you know, um, mm. chances are it all, it comes, all comes back to you. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting, because sometimes if you have to go to the ex's place for something, you'll see your pictures are still up, right? Yeah. And you're like, what? What is going on here? Yeah. We broke up a while ago and they still have my pictures up, but they won't talk to me. Mm -hmm. How does that make any sense? Is that a mixed message or what? <laughs> yeah. The other thing you'll see is also on social media, they might still have those pictures up. Mm -hmm. So this can vary for, from person to person as some people don't really touch their social media. But I mean, you know your ex the best. And if they're somebody who is very active, chances are they didn't just forget to take them down. No, they yeah. didn't. Uh, another big thing that you'll see is if you kind of bump into them or they're frequenting places that you might be. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen people that have owned like a coffee shop and they kept going by the coffee shop or would go inside or walk past or, the, you know, going to the gym that you go to at the hours that they know you're going to be there. Absolutely. They're looking for reasons to bump into you, to find you. They're kind of spying on you. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to admit it, but they're going to kind of look like it's an accident. Oh, we yeah. just happen to be here. Yeah. And then I, I had recently a, a situation where people kept meeting at the grocery store because they knew what time each other shopped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so another sign could be if they're constantly checking your social media or soon after you post. So I know this is true for Instagram stories, but they still watch your stories even risking the fact that they know, you'll know that they saw it. Um, so there's some type of intentionality behind there. And it also shows that they're curious as to what you're doing. They want to know about who you're around, where you're going, your whereabouts. Um, so this could be a sign. And also timing is another factor here. Because if they are viewing your stories immediately after you post mm -hmm. it, that shows some eagerness into yeah. seeing what you're doing. They can't wait. Exactly. They're However, too anxious, yeah. Exactly. This is kind of tricky, though, because some people might intentionally wait so that they don't look too eager. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it can be kind of tricky to know. Mm -hmm. uh, and this can be another thing that you guys can scrutinize on. So we don't tell you this to increase your anxiety, um, but rather just to keep you aware that these are different ways that people might pretend to be over you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the social media can be tricky because mm -hmm. sometimes they're smart enough to know, well, I got to wait before I like this post <laughs> yeah. or to look at it uh -huh. because I don't mm -hmm. want to look eager. But sometimes they're so anxious that they have to do it, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, another big thing that you might see an ex that's not really over you doing is trying to make you jealous. Sometimes exes try too hard on social media to look like they're super happy. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy. Life is so great. Look at this amazing person that I'm with. I'm so happy with them. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, they're not really as happy as they're acting like it. But for you, it feels devastating, right? Yeah. You see that picture of them and you think it's the most amazing thing in the world. I can tell you with the Applebee's girl. They were posting pictures uh, like right around Christmas and I'm mm -hmm. like, oh my God, they're by the tree together. <laughs> they're by the tree. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right. And then, you know, and then he breaks up with her on New Year's. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of telling of mm -hmm. like, sometimes you think it's so great and so amazing, mm -hmm. but it's not that great at all. And, and that would be Beaky Buzzard. Right? Yes, that, that's Beaky Buzzard flying in my tree. <laughs> <laughs> Setting up a nest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He flew off, though. Yeah, quite quickly. <laughs> yes, he did. And so that's what my point is, is that, you know, sometimes your ex is trying to show mm -hmm. that they're really over you, done, moved on, and they're not. Yeah, and uh, just like social media is... Uh, pretty much manufactured by people with all this Photoshop and filters. It's not exactly reality. No. Same goes with the happy pictures of your ex and whoever knew that they're with. It's not reflective of the quality of their relationship. It's just a picture where they're smiling. Yeah. So jealousy is a big one. Mm -hmm. Are they trying to make you jealous? 
Um, are they trying to make it seem like this new person is so great and so amazing? You know, maybe they're trying to hurt you. Maybe they're mm -hmm. trying to see if you still care. Maybe they're trying to get you angry to see if you're going to reach out and break no contact to yell at them. I see that a lot, guys. Don't do that one. I, I see that one a lot, actually. They post something and then you get so mad. I, who is this girl? I can't believe you did that. I had an interesting one recently. The girl figured out that the boyfriend's Alexa records everything. So she logged into the Alexa and could hear all the voice recordings of what you ask Alexa. Oh and so he, she heard a girl's voice saying, Alexa, play music. So she knew there was another girl in the picture. But she didn't just take that information and keep it to herself. Call them up. What are you doing? Who is this woman? She's at the house. She's using Alexa. I can hear her voice. She lost emotional self-control. Yeah. Yes. And then she just hurts her chances. Yeah. So the other thing that can also happen is that if they get jealous of you, so they might show some type of overprotectiveness, or they might try to pry, they might try to ask mutual friends as to what you're doing, um, they might try to find out through word of mouth, um, or even if you are still in contact, they might show that jealousy even when you're talking. So you might say, oh, like, I I'm going to a party to hang out with some friends, and they're like, okay, well, who's going? Or they might try to downplay whoever else that you're seeing or going out with, oh, she's no good anyways, or he's no good anyways. Um, so you might see this as them pretending to be over you where they're still having those protective feelings of you and still wanting, perhaps, some type of exclusivity, however broken up, Yeah, if that makes sense. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Let's talk for a minute about calling your ex's friends. We see it very frequently, and that's often a loss of emotional self-control. Mm -hmm. And it usually causes all kinds of problems. People will also call family members, which of course makes your ex even more angry at you than oh, they yeah. were before. But you can see how in the midst of overwhelming anxiety, people are probably looking for some kind of reassurance, mm -hmm. you know, so it's understandable. But don't do it. It, it causes all kinds of it problems. It often just yeah. makes your ex really angry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another thing that your ex might do is leave you on a Netflix account, mm -hmm. a Spotify account. Yep. I hear just, those are the two big ones, Netflix yep. and Spotify. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Spotify is if you are still connected on some type of playlist, they might update it with songs that they know you like or bands that they know you like or sentimental songs. Oh. So their playlist might give you a clue. The same goes with Netflix. If you're still on their Netflix account, you can see what they're watching. Mm -hmm. um, not that this is necessarily prying, but they didn't take you off those accounts either. Um, the other thing is they could also keep you on a phone account. Like let's say you shared some type of bills mm -hmm. together. Um, that would be reasonably easy to separate. Mm -hmm. They might still keep you on those billing lines. I remember with my ex, I was on his phone bill for a good year and I would pay him. I would Venmo him every month the same amount until finally I was the one to call the phone company and said, okay, it's time. <laughs> yeah, it's time to end this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, those are good ones. Mm -hmm. um, asking friends about you and how you're doing. Mm -hmm. Are they reaching out to people in your life to get information? Mm -hmm. That's a big one, mm -hmm. right? If they're taking it to that level of finding out, going out of their way to reach out to somebody that you know to find out what's going on, it means they still care. Mm -hmm. And the real question is, are you seeing somebody? Yeah. Right? Yeah, the question behind <laughs> all the questions is, are you seeing somebody? Are they mm -hmm. still available? Mm -hmm. Another thing you might see is if they use the indirect direct approach. So they might use this technique as a way to dip their toe in the water to mm -hmm. see how you're going to respond when they try to initiate contact. Um, so this is another sign that they might be pretending to be over you where they try to use an indirect method to get to you. Yeah, they're contacting you about something that's so frivolous and, and, and insignificant and you're just like, I don't understand. Why would you contact me about this? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because they really be, want to be in contact with you. They might not be able to do much more than just a brief connection or breadcrumb with mm -hmm. you, but it tells me that they couldn't not handle the separation anxiety, that right. they couldn't handle that yep. space. Right. 
And lastly, this one's quite obvious, but if they're talking to you more frequently, um, or if they're asking directly if you're seeing somebody new, um, that underlying question, as Margaret said, mm -hmm. to some of those earlier points, um, but they might try to initiate more contact with you to find out more about what's going on in your life, um, and also just to keep that contact with you. Um, of course, this is not a list of the most mature ways to express your interest into somebody. This is a list of ways that your ex is pretending to be over you. Mm -hmm. um, so these are not going to be idealistic and they're not going to be direct. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, you know, as they get closer to showing any signs of wanting to repair it, they might kind of want to direct, slide right back in. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. You know, they're not going to be like, let's talk about everything that went wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, and let's just go out. They kind of want to act like nothing happened yeah. a lot of the times. And that's very common. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so they'll might say something like, I just want to let you know that I'm not seeing that guy anymore, blah, or whatever his name is, if you knew about it. Mm -hmm. And that's like a hint, like, I'm available. Yeah. Or maybe they'll even say, so what's your situation? What's going on mm -hmm. with you? Um, and they're curious about, mm, you know, are you still single? Because I'm not sure I want to, yeah. you know, have ended this. Mm -hmm. You know, it can get tricky. You know, it can get tricky when you're looking at breakups and why someone's leaving and their true intentions and motivations and, you know, because there's a lot of different reasons people need to end a relationship. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different reasons why they could come back and try and repair it. So it can be overwhelming. And, you know, it's normal if you're getting mixed messages from your ex and you're confused. And, you know, that's why we're here to help coach you and guide you through those things. You know, we are going to look at a situation and give our insight into what we've seen or what we think with our you know gut and looking at the facts you know and it's easy to do that you just go to my website askcraig.net you sign up for whatever coaching option works for you i do email and i do skype coach margaret is available for skype coaching if you think i can be helpful please sign up and coach victoria will continue to train with us i'll be here but that's it for this video i'm coach craig kenneth i'm coach margaret and i'm coach victoria and we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.